Oh, Mama V is here. Uh, and uh, we all know that we're waiting for the Black Stars to win that match against Tunisia. <laughs> uh, we'll take one match at a time. Looking at how our coach has been speaking, you know, it's only the players that we have to depend on to do the honors for us. What's your problem? You want a win. Oh, uh, the, the way opinion. the coach speaks, I'll what has that got to do with you winning or yeah. not? <laughs> I think it's got something to do with it, unless you say it's not. The pressure is on. Yeah, but so you know what? Know. It's Madagascar. Oh my God! Yeah. They and South Africa even. Yeah. And and nobody expected anything from them. And yeah. look at them. They're and, through. And even South Africa and Egypt. You know. Yeah. That was a shocker. Yeah, it was. <laughs> that was a shocker. Especially you know coming, <laughs> the the goal coming after ninety minutes. It was a yeah. bit of a heartbreak for the Egyptians. Already they, apart from their matches, were not attending the other matches. Yeah. It's unlike true. unlike sometimes let's say during the African Cup of Nations in Ghana in 2008. Oh, as for Ghana, dear Charlie, we hosted it. Ah, yeah, because everybody yeah, was encouraged to go. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we had discounted well, I think we're just, tickets. We're, we're excited that we're yeah, hosting that came, it. Yeah. We wanted it to be successful. No, no, yeah. And it didn't matter if Ghana wasn't playing. We yeah. still wanted to go to the stadium. But you, exactly. you, we're not seeing the same with Egypt. Yeah. <laughs> no, not at but all. But I think the pressure was too much for them. It's not easy to host and win all. I think in the current age, yes. Yeah, because the last they time they hosted, they won. But in the current age, it's a bit difficult because all the players tend to know each other and how they play. And um, these days, there's a lot of knowledge sharing on the technical abilities of each coach and each player. So mm -hmm. it makes it quite difficult to remain competitive throughout without any challenge from either a Mino or any smaller team. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Malagasis showed us with some great, oh. great, great team. You know, they were, they, I was listening to a little of the a background as to the team, where they've come from, yes. and why they're doing so well. And there's nothing that anybody could, could pinpoint point to. Mm. Apart from the fact that it's team effort. Yes, it's harmony. team effort. And their coach apparently coaches some fit side, some <laughs> league B, yeah. not like a first exactly. tier league or anything exactly. like that. Exactly. Uh, and, but they are playing for their country. Yes, true. Yeah. And uh, if you look at the way they play, it also shows that when um, a team has cohesion and they play for each other, then it means that um, they will ultimately reach their goal. Because mm -hmm. even when a player could have been selfish, you see that they pass uh, to, yeah. to a teammate so that, yeah. that that objective will be met. And, and I think that all the teams need to co copy that. You see that yesterday in the match um, that Guinea played with uh, Algeria, yeah. you could find that the Algeria increased the tempo on the mm -hmm. Guineans at least for the first 30 minutes to make sure that uh, they at least had a goal. You know, before they had the second one for Marais, who yeah. plays for Manchester City, and then Congo also, yeah, oh gosh. just going down. So, Cameroon, so that the game between Cameroon and Nigeria, I realized a lot of people were rooting for Cameroon, and they said, Oh, they were, was, yeah. I had well, in my neighborhood, when when I when Nigeria scored, uh, everybody was, Hey, so I don't know, maybe you know, we have a lot of Nigerians in Ghana, mm. so. No, but, 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 I, but, but I think that many Ghanaians from the discussions I had with some friends said they would want to play Nigeria. Ultimately, that is if we're able to progress really? and go. I thought Nigeria through. was a threat. No, we, we really no, no it's really because we, we always <laughs> play them, so it could go either way. So <laughs> rather it goes either way than uh, go to play Cameroon yeah. that we have played. Yeah. Okay, now let's uh, do the newspapers. Uh, we'll have a lot, a lot of uh, conversations on the ongoing Africa Cup of Nations. But let's also, because I started talking about the women football, uh, USA, well, no shocker there, right? Uh, they won again, and they have this case well, that's no gone to ab arbitration yeah. because now they're asking for equal pay, yes. parity in pay. So, I know, right? Yes, yeah, women's is, rights. Is <laughs> but no, but but in terms of USA specific, um, the the women the women in I think a number of years have have rigged in a lot more than the men. In terms of, but but you, of course you know that soccer is not their main thing. Yeah, true. Yeah, in the U.S., so maybe it's a different conversation altogether. But it's beginning something, which is which, hey. we, which we are watching. Women's rights. <laughs> Let's do the newspapers now. I have the Daily Graphic, and I want to start with the graphic front page of the Daily Graphic. Here we go. Ghana to host African Continental Free Trade Area Secretariat. A graphic commended for launch of regional spotlight. Limited voter registration ends. NDC asks for extension. Personal security tips also in the paper today. Giants battle in science and mass quiz semis today. Uh, so a 
fierce economic battle awaits us today as nine senior high schools clash in what promises to be a mouth-watering semi-final of the 2019 National Science and Mass Quiz. Uh, and that's how, that's actually the, the, the opening of that write-up in the Daily Graphic newspaper. I love it. Uh, we're bringing you all the contests live here on Joy News. It begins 8 a.m. today, so you've got to stay glued right here. Uh, Prisek Owas Adisko uh, Tepa Wegehe Pesco Ketasco Ogasco GSTS. Hmm. The GSTS go through with 26 points. Okay, but let's concentrate on the banner headline here. Traffic lights still off after June timeline. It says, Amy, uh, many traffic lights in Accra are still malfunctioning in spite of plans made earlier to fix all malfunctioning lights by the end of last month. Uh, at, at the more than 20 road intersections, the daily graphic surveyed in Accra, there were different forms of challenges with the traffic light. While some were totally off, there were others that were working partially. And this, uh, this is on the front page of the Daily Graphic Fed. Uh, there were others that were working partially while the rest were not functioning at all. Apart from, uh, apart from those visibly broken down, and I'll continue from page three, from the uh, front page to page three, some of the lights had power in them, but were malfunctioning as all three signs, uh, that's the colors, came on at the same time and did not blink. Some uh, pelican crossings for pedestrians also showed both red and green lights at the same time, exposing pedestrians to road accident and knockdown. So the traffic lights uh, are very, okay, so they talk about the importance of the, of, of the traffic lights, uh, the challenges, those that are totally off. Checks by the Daily Graphic at various traffic light spots uh, last week indicated that all the traffic lights are the graphic road at the Bracao official town intersection near the Graphic Communications Group Limited, as well as other, another at the Graphic Press House near Accra Brewery, and the Rollins Park and CNB were not functioning. Similarly, those are the environs of the Kwame Nkrumah Interchange in front of the Orion Cinema, the GCB Bank near Vienna City, and the Rich Taxi Rank, the New Plant Station, the Runabouts close to New Times Corporation, the Achimota News Station, Shell, and the Achimota Forest were all not functioning. The situation was the same on the Kanda Highway towards the runabout near the Kanda Flats at Kanda 441, the Kanda Total Bus Stop heading towards GBC, and the Adenta SDA intercession. This is a very extensive uh, piece, and they break everything down. There's a conversation with the uh, Department of Urban Roads. That side of the story is also featured in here so you might want to take your time and read this piece but this is certainly a situation that we all encounter on our roads traffic light not working and all, when all the lights decide to come on at the same time it gets more confused uh, confusing right uh, center spread of the paper now the daily graphic newspaper our graduates need knowledge capital uh, to go into self-employment also acceptance must be our purpose in life as a write-up uh, okay, back page of the Daily Graphic, Tunisia will fall. Uh, that's according to our captain, Andre Ayu. And then Sweet Spirit Alisa Hotel to host graphic sports, Afghan Blitz. Okay, so we have to take a look at the next paper. We'll go to the Today newspaper. Energy crisis looms. Uh, we're told that there's growing debt. And uh, we also know that, well, there's, a, there's now a call by the energy providers, the independent power producers, to be paid some $700 million owed them, or we could uh, have some impact on power that is supplies. Ultimately, from the suppliers to Greco, then will be transmitted to uh, PDS, you know, former ECG. I keep saying former ECG, you know, so that will put things into perspective. Also, on the front page of the Today newspaper, uh, we have Arthur Kennedy jobs that now of Varsity's bill, we know uh, the, the agitations uh, that have been uh, raised, especially in the rank and file of the teachers of the various universities, over how government could have some regulation of how the universities are administered across our country. MPP defectors swerved, you see, 
uh, back page of the Today newspaper. Save Etiwa Group slams minister over Galamse tagging comment, and uh, we've not abandoned NDC project, according to the municipal chief executive for the Fantiman Municipal Assembly in South Pole. Uh, and uh, um, that's uh, Kenneth Kelly Suma. Mr. Suma, good morning to you. It's been a while. I'll keep in touch. Let's go to the Daily Guide newspaper. It has on the front page, cybercrime drama I was coached to lie, according to Emmanuel Brichum. And he's uh, one of two persons of modern Ghana who were picked up by security operatives. Mm. And we know has, what has transpired since. Soldier hot. Soldier hot. For MP's chamber video. I don't know what <laughs> came over. Lance Corporal Isaac Wasa Lincoln. <laughs> he wanted to be a civilian. No, he's been a citizen, not a oh, spectator. Okay. So he wanted to be a citizen. So he, he is a citizen. So he was a citizen in that <laughs> video. He is a citizen. So yeah. he has every right to make commentary. All right. Except that because of the particular uniform that, that he, he wore, it, ca it, it comes with mm. something else. Yes. Well, I, I, I don't know. Got a code of conduct, right? It, yeah, but I don't know in this era of free speech, technological advancement, and social media or the multiplicity of media. Uh, whether we need to take a look at some of the quotes and involvement. Abeg, don't take it to the military. <laughs> <laughs> Ghana pledges $10 million for AU Free Trade Secretary. And, and look, there's been some interesting statistics so far backing how this could be the best thing that has happened to Africa. If only we will remove all the prejudices we tend to have with each other and trade among ourselves. Even just take at flying. Just uh, take a look at flying. Just flying from here to Sierra Leone alone could cost you a lot of money compared to how you fly from a double of that distance in Europe. Just think about it. Uh, uh, MPP half uh, chairman dies in lorry accident. That was a tragic one. And another tragic incident that was recorded was uh, a GCB staff committing suicide. And uh, we're told that she was uh, at a branch uh, around in Sawam or close to Sawam. Let's look at the Daily Dispatch newspaper and we'll go on to the next. Uh, the Daily Dispatch newspaper has an open letter from an NDC MP. NDC seems to be losing focus. Are we ready for 2020? He's worried. The story is on the back page of the paper and the NDC MP is um, the member of parliament of the National Democratic Congress. Uh, dear, da, 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 da. Hey. didn't publish his name. Do you have read? Or oh, the Daily Dispatch didn't publish. All right, and, and if you look at the front page of the Daily Dispatch newspaper, it has um, Joy 997, what can a 200 or what can 200 million US dollars do in the government 2018 budget, for example, for special development initiatives? One ambulance is costing Ghana 354,750. So, you know, there's some um, maths there. It could mean that we can buy 2,818 ambulances. Wow. And just $200 million. Okay. And we know it's all related to the chamber and the cost that has been speculated. We have to say it's been speculated. Alex Mode on Sankofa Gas Project, an invitation letter to Ukufado on new $243 million new chamber requiring more answers. Okay. Let's do the finder. Uh, front page of the finder. Uh, pay $700 million or we will shut down six IPPs. Give 18 working days ultimatum. Details of that story on page two. Okay, so eight working days. I beg your pardon. So six independent power producers, which currently supply about 1,500 megawatts of electricity, have threatened to shut down their plant if Power Distribution Services Limited fails to settle debts amounting to over $700 million within eight working days. So while uh, acknowledging the negative impact a shutdown of power plants will have, they said they are left with no choice since they cannot continue to be saddled with huge debts. And according to them, as of the time the Electricity Company of Ghana was taken over by PDS, they were owed over $400 million dollars. 
They said ever since PDS took over, it has not paid them a dime, resulting in accumulation of another debt of over $300 million, uh, bringing the total debt to over $700 million. The companies, Sonon Asogli Power, uh, BXC Solar Ghana, Senate Energy Limited, SEM Power Generation Company Limited, and Car Powership uh, are members of the Chamber of Independent Power Producers and Bulk consumers there's a lot more to the story that you can read on page two uh, a shutdown will certainly not be in our favor as ordinary citizens of ghana we're going to suffer the effects of this their businesses uh, who also suffer uh, as well so hopefully we don't get there but uh, we'll see how this story pans out later today let's still go back to the front page of the finder ghana to support african trade african Free Trade Secretariat with $10 million, according to President de Cofuado. Release video of Ajafo's interrogation. Uh, that's a call by One Ghana Movement. The full story is on page four. It says civil society group One Ghana Movement is demanding the immediate release of the unedited video footage of the interrogation of modern Ghana deputy editor while he was in their custody. This should prove the council's denial that Emmanuel Jaffo Abugri was not tortured as he alleged following his release from their detention. This, we believe, according to the statement, will enable us, the people, to make our own judgment and reaffirm our confidence in national security and its ethics. Uh, Ejafo and two others were arrested uh, and that's the background by national security operatives June 27 and charged with stealing and unauthorized access to electronic records. While in custody, the editor claims he was subjected to electric shock and other forms of torture by the security operatives. And um, one Ghana says we consider it to be a clear and deliberate attempt by the suspect uh, to, to discredit the investigation and the case against him torture and manhandling of suspects. Okay, this is uh, contained in the national security statement that was released. Uh, torture and manhandling of suspects are not part and parcel of the culture and architecture of the Secretariat under the administration of President Kufuado. But the One Ghana movement believes that only way this denial can be accepted is if the public is allowed access to video footage of what transpired during the detention and that's why they are calling for the footage the unedited footage to be out there well all of us support that call don't we especially because nobody else was allowed there if national security had allowed a lawyer in the presence of the persons that they arrested then there would have been a witness right so in the absence of a third party an independent person is the video footage that can tell us the story so we know who to believe until then we stand with the people yeah because we know how national security operates, don't we? There's a history to this. So if they want to be vindicated, well, then they have to release the footage. Mm. That's it for the finder. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um. Oh, there was, okay, yeah. The Ghanaian Times newspaper. Mm. Let's do the Ghanaian Times. Front page of the Times. Tidal waves hits Agavaji uh, Sarakofa. 521 rendered homeless. Uh, well, in my hometown and places near my hometown, this is like the biggest challenge. And I hope that when political parties and political activists come to stand before them, and I wish I could go to Angloga uh, and, and do some, uh, you know, some advocacy. They should ask, we, because we need answers to this, and we need somebody who would bring like concrete ideas. We need this has to stop otherwise the whole town will be wiped away definitely and, and, and it is real when you come from the area and when you see it when you visit and you realize that certain homes are no longer existing because they've simply been washed away and if you get to know how long this has been ongoing and and this has been on since uh, either before independence or just mm -hmm. after independence because it's just uh, been eroding and i keep making all these allusions about when you go to the west America and Europe, homes or properties that are along shores or beaches, mm. beach condos or beach houses are one, some of the most expensive realty or estate houses you can ever find on the market. In our case, our shorelines, if you want to live there, are death traps. We have to take a critical look at yeah. some of those issues. Look, we've had 
Europeans come onto our continent during the period when we have the transatlantic slave trade, build some of the most fortified castles and trade forts we can ever find across the world. And for hundreds of years, those forts and castles are still standing upright. They haven't been eroded by the sea. They, they still serve a good purpose now for touristic as well as uh, for us to take uh, a brief look at what the ruins would be and also what history mm. portends for us. Now, we've come to the point where we need to make some sacrifices as a country. N putting our resources where we should because people's lives matter yeah. and also preserving our environment. It's not only about preserving the lives of those who come from there, those who reside there, but also preserving your environment. Because what's happening is that gradually the sea is eroding landmass of our country. And if you go to some of the areas in Africa, we're told that the landmass of some areas or some countries have been shrinking. And I don't know, we tend to trade some of the best environmentalists, mm. some of the best climate change experts in this part of the I, world. I have some of them we have even given scholarship to go and study outside with the taxpayers' money. And if they can impact, then I don't know what yeah. we want to do. I, I have to think of a strategy. We have to go back home and do the advocacy. No. Uh, you know, go because to the it's right from the Aplau to otherwise the... the w the, the, the Axim area, and you get to find that just along the coast of Ghana, mm. people are losing their homes and property, yeah. and people are losing their lives as well, yeah. because that is livelihood for people. True. And if in 10 years' time or 20 years' time, you will not find a house that you were seeing two years ago or you're seeing today in 20 years' time, it is sad. Yeah. It also means that we don't have a plan. Just like every part of our national life, we have no plan. So sad. Oh, let's go back to the front page of the Ghanaian Times newspaper. Uh, Ghana selected to host AFC FTA Secretariat, Fire Guards Ministry of Health ICT server room. That story is on page 18. And it says Fire Guarded the Ministry of Health headquarters building in Accra on Saturday, completely destroying the room, hosting the information communication technology server room and, other of, and another office within minutes. Personnel from the ministry's fire department got to the scene and extinguished the fire, which began at about 4.30 a.m. after a security man on guard duty rushed to the station to report the fire outbreak. The ministry's divisional commander of the Ghana National Fire Service, uh, who confirmed the incident to the Ghanaian Times, said the quick response of the firefighters had saved the entire Ministry of Health headquarters from being ravaged. She said the security guard tried opening the door when he detected smoke from the server room but because all doors to the ministry had been electronically uh, locked i guess not looked could only be opened b with biometric fingerprints he uh, and so he could not having realized that he could not open the doors to the building he then rushed uh, over to inform the station the six member fire team and they give a background to that okay well all right so i guess quick intervention it could have been more serious uh, than it is and i guess well today's a, it's a working day it's a monday so we'll see the real effects of the server room that's been destroyed uh, but agnes Asempana, and this is on the front page of the Times, a staff of the Insawan branch of the Ghana Commercial, no, GCB Bank Limited, has committed suicide by hanging. The partially naked body of the 42-year-old was found dangling in her room. Um, these are very disturbing details. Uh, I'm sorry, but we have to share. Uh, was dangling in her room with a nylon rope fastened to her neck. Uh, in a suburb of the Suho municipality in the eastern region. And according to sources, the deceased last Friday, July 5th, went to her two-bedroom apartment to pick some items only to commit suicide. It was her younger brother uh, who found her dead, uh, who found her dead at about 4 p.m. when he went to visit her. And the Eastern Regional Police Public Relations Officer who confirmed the incident said no external marks of violence were detected to suggest foul play. The body has since been sent to the home government hospital mortuary pending an autopsy. Uh, but there, there was information um, going around because of the 
uh, the situation with the bank and how they're laying workers off. Yeah. Uh, some some persons had suggested that this could have been the effects of that. Yes, and, and beyond that also is the absence of a properly well laid out structure, not only for social welfare, but providing for the psychological well-being of the working population and ordinary citizens, because mm -hmm. it's absent. Um, if you go to the UK, they have various GPs, the general physicians who are assigned to geographical areas. We don't have that, because uh, the population uh, to uh, or the ratio of the population to having a medical doctor is so low, you can't have access. Not even to talk about the psychiatrics or the shrinks, as the American will call it in that parlance, even though very informal, the, as, as we'll have it. And, and yeah. that's the state of our country. So you're coming from the medical point. I just wanted to touch briefly on the fact that, you know, you, so you work in, a, in an organization for a number of years and suddenly they want to bring your secondary school record to haunt you and say that, because you didn't make the grades, even though you've gone on to have tertiary education and you're duly qualified, they use that secondary education grade to get you out. And that's discriminatory. I know, it's, it's something that we have and to that's spend, discriminatory. spend time to. So it's, it's almost as, as if they're looking for ways to get people out and, and, and so they're going back into their records. And, and you're not even using what I used to get into the job. You're going way, 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 way back into time. <laughs> and we, we have to, I, I don't know, we, yeah. we probably will have to explore the subject. Uh, oh, definitely. Yeah. I'll just, the last time when I was reading uh, this, uh, then, um, is it Joe Metal, the gospel songster? Uh, he came to mind because he said he didn't have a properly structured secondary schooling, mm. uh, but he's had tertiary education. He's making great impact in the world in which he finds yeah, himself. In this era when people are actually being yeah. um, innovative and creative with no certificates at all, we're we are, we are asking people to leave because of SSSCE, even though that's not all they have. Yes. Yeah. We have to go though. Very discriminatory. So we'll, we'll, we'll find time and, and talk about this. Okay. So we have to do sports. And um, Asaribidiako is on with the latest, especially from the camp of the Black Stars. Do stay with us.